Cool. So when did you guys form Byzantine? When did when did that all start? It started in the summer of uh, 2000, so thirteen years ago. Um, I, I had uh, just graduated graduated college at uh, West Virginia University, and I was in a band up there, and we were uh, trying to play and trying to drink, and you know it, it fizzled out. Uh, and then I was, I really wanted to play with a good guitar player and like a solo guy. And I knew of Tony Borbaugh. He, uh, he was in a band in West Virginia called Temper that I was a big fan of. And then he went and joined Chum for a while. And I had found out that he had quit Chum. So I approached him with starting a band with me. But I was living in Morgantown, living in Huntington. We were just talking through the internet. And I decided to pack up my shit and I moved down to Charleston. And then we started doing demos and stuff together, just like drum machine demos and us playing. And that was like you know, 2000, 2001. So, yeah. Now I remember listening to those demos and, and I mean, I still, you know, you still catch them floating around every now and then somebody has one or, uh, you know, I, I still have the MP3s on, on my computer, uh, and they'll, yeah. they'll kick on every now and then when it's on random, you know, and, uh, it, th- that stuff is just awesome. Uh, you know, well, the, you guys you. recorded it with a, with a drum machine and even played for a really long time with a drum machine, got a lot of your, uh, your, uh, initial success, you know, with, uh, before even having a drummer. Uh, so th- tell us a little bit about what that was like playing without a drummer and then uh, having to go through the process of actually uh, kind of growing one. <laughs> it was horrible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, we, every time we played out, our butts were puckered up because we were thinking, A, we looked stupid as hell. Because uh, between every song, we have one of us has to go over to a tape deck and like, <laughs> hit pause and then, you know, and shuffle it. And because uh, we would burn the drum onto a CD, and we literally get the tracks. And uh, we was hoping that by playing out, we would have a drummer come to the show and go, "Oh, I want, I can play that stuff." And it proved to be very difficult to find somebody because we played out for like two and a half years, I think. We actually end up landing uh, the local festival X Fest with no drummer. And we got down and played X Fest, and it was, you know, a big festival. And our drum machine, our CD started skipping. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest show we were doing. And we were like, okay, this has got to stop now. You know? So, uh, but it did help us because I, the, the demos we were making, they got on Rock 5 and X1063, the local radio stations here. So they were playing them in the, uh, you know, the loud local stuff. Right. And we were getting fans on our MySpace. And uh, then the demo got in the hands of people out of state, like namely like the guys in Lamb of God got one of the demos. And they were like, whoa, this is awesome, you know? So we had to quickly find a drummer. And luckily we found Matt Wolf, who had, uh, I think he started playing drums two years before he joined the business team. So uh, his drumming skills were on microwave. <laughs> right. Yeah, and and so he sort of he grew into his his uh, his drumming chops just you know pretty much playing with you guys then. Yes. Yeah. Like he he had been a guitar player for about fifteen years. And I think he just switched over because he's like, there's too many guitar players in West Virginia. That I'm going to just try drums. And he formed a band, and they were kind of like uh, maybe Seven Dust heavy, you know? Yeah. Um, but I, he was literally learning as he went along, and uh, uh, we got we tried him out once, and he sucked because he was hungover. <laughs> and then he was like, a couple months later, he's like, let me try out again. I was like, okay. And he was like exponentially better. But I think it was not because he was sober, but because he was getting so good so quick, you know? Like, it was literally, he was two and a half years into it playing. And normally, in two and a half years, you're still learning rudiments and stuff like that. And he was able to pick up on the business thing, like polyrhythm and stuff. So, yeah, so like 
a lot of a lot of times, like we were talking uh, a couple of days ago, me and Matt, and he's like, nobody ever recognizes my drums, <laughs> and and I was like, well, I started thinking about it, like this guitar oriented band, you you formed your style around this band so much that you're almost kid, you know. Oh you're yeah. Like totally, he totally plays within the confines of the song, and he does exactly what needs to be done. And I think he does a great job at it. Right. But I mean, and like it blends over. in. And like you were saying, I mean, his, his skills—they did kind of just exponentially evolve. And I mean, you can you can tell it over the course of the albums. You know, the the uh, the yeah. uh, major albums that you guys have put in, put out so far is even with this with the new one, you can just tell he's he's even locked in tighter. And I mean. I, I, I maybe I don't think maybe uh, the people that you know just casual listeners maybe don't don't recognize his drumming because it is it, it right. does blend in so well. But you know I, I think definitely other musicians really do notice that. And you know you can't deny the fact that you guys it took so long for you guys to find a drummer because the uh, the tone of the music the the the, the polyrhythms and things like that are so yeah. difficult that that's hard. So anybody that can even pull that off in a in a listenable fashion. Has got to be great. He he has. He's he's gotten better yeah. and better. So so you yeah, you can pass I, that along, man. You can pass along our uh, our compliments, man, because uh, we do notice his drumming. He's he's amazing. That's Matt's awesome. great. I do think I, I think he's the star on the new album. Like he's the glue that held it all together. And and it was weird. Like if we had a drummer that was all hands, just going all over the place, I don't think a lot of the wrist breathe like they have. And like you go back and you listen first album and he he was playing playing decent and then when we got to the second album serpent it's like holy crap you know it was a different drummer and then now you listen to it and it's like wow this is like he reminds me uh you know like of what Benny paul was doing just like i am playing the dime bag to shine yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, and that's that's yeah. exactly what he does. He sits right there where he, where he needs to be, and and like you said on on the new record, it really does come through because it, I mean the songs sound like they're they're just you guys lived those songs together.